just going back, you used the term uh, liminal. Uh, can you yeah. go back and... Uh, well, liminal is a term uh, first used by Arnold van Gennep, a Belgian folklorist at the turn of the century. He wrote a book which was published in 1908 called Le Rite de Passage, Rites of Passage. And that's a very, you know, it's a term that everybody kind of knows. And in this book he said that uh, rituals, or especially rites of passage, rites which change people's status, have three phases. The uh, separation phase, where a person is taken from their own old status, but also taken from their old place, taken from their old time, their accustomed place and time. You have to do it in a special enclosed place and time. And the liminal period, the, which means limin, like uh, on a door frame, that which is not in this room or in that room, but between rooms, so this in-between time and space where during this in-between time and space, the work of the ritual takes place. In other words, whatever it is that the ritual is going to do in an African or n native Australian society, maybe the person is going to be circumcised or tattooed or marked. In our society, maybe they're going to wear a ring or they're uh, going to, let's say, in a long-range liminal space, they're going to go to college and get a degree. Uh, but the work of the liminal period is to change them, and it's bounded off from ordinary life. College does function that way for us. I mean, it's supposed to be on a campus, separate from regular life. You're no longer living with your parents, but you're no long, not yet living alone. I mean, the traditional view of it. So you're in between. You're really, uh, from the point of one point of view, you're alone. And on your own, from another point of view, you are still parentally protected. And the job of education literally is to lead you out. That's what it means in Latin, ed, to, to lead from one place to another. Lead you out of one way of thinking and acting into another and to prepare you for participation in so-called mature or developed social life. But in, in other cultures, the initiations may be much more intense and, uh, and bounded in time. But at any rate, this liminal period is where the work of the ritual takes place. And then at the end of the liminal period, you're reintegrated or re-aggregated into the society, but as a different kind of person. You're either an adult when you were a child, or you're married when you were single, or you're dead when you were alive, or you're a king when you were just the crown prince, what have you. All of these things are the, the work of the ritual, which m affects that change, the liminal period. Now, Victor Turner, a very uh, great uh, theorist of uh, ritual, and uh, happily a friend of mine, he died in uh, uh, at the age of 63 in 1983, I believe, or somewhere around there, um, he took Van Gennep's ideas and elaborated them in a series of books, The Ritual Process, Dramas, Fields, and Metaphors, From Ritual to Theater and Back, and developed the notion of the liminal and the what he called the anti-structural work of ritual. In other words, we often think of ritual as enforcing social norms, of uh, uh, continuing that which is uh, conservative. But Turner showed by analyzing Haight-Ashbury, which was a, the hippie section of San Francisco during the uh, early 60s, and analyzing Ndembu or rights, rights of African uh, people that he lived with in Uganda and others, that ritual can also have an, an anti-structural or a creative process, that it can break down accepted norms, that it can be used in revolutionary, rebellious ways. In this sense, he joined with Bakhtin, and he uh, uh, clearly developed the ideas of, of Van Gennep in a ways that Van Gennep uh, might not have seen, and also Durkheim, Emil Durkheim, who also had a, a kind of constitutive or uh, a conservative view of the functions of ritual. So Turner didn't deny those, but said that there's a whole other part where illicit, subversive, subjunctive behaviors, excuse me, are allowed and encouraged, and where the persons are, 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 can critique the dominant social discourse. And he said that when this occurs in developed uh, uh, industrial societies, they should be called liminoid rather than liminal. Like liminal, but not exactly like liminal. And he included in these the genres of arts, uh, theater, dance, music, which he called liminoid phenomena. They are related to liminal phenomena. They may be even elaborations of things performed during the liminal phase in earlier cultures. But now they take on their own life, and they can be crit critical uh, so that the shaman, let's say, who is, might be a, a rather strange figure in a traditional society is directly related to the artist, who also may be a strange figure. And some artists support the dominant culture, but some artists can be very critical of it through their work, not through uh, intellect. So he developed this relationship between liminal and liminoid. And the notion that re-aggregation is not the only outcome of this. It can also have schism. And from this, Turner developed his social drama model, that the social dramas take four phases, breach, 
crisis, redress of action, re reintegration, or uh, schism. Uh, for example, to use Canadian social drama, Meech Lake, well, I'll analyze that in terms of a Turnerian social drama. So Turner said that, and he and I developed this theory to a certain degree together or elaborated it together in its later phase, that there's a loop but where aesthetic or rhetorical devices shape the behavior of social drama or political action, and political or social actions shape the kind of content or subject matter of, of aesthetic dramas, but that these are not in a mimetic, they're not imitating each other, but they're in a very dynamic kind of Mobius loop, infinity loop way. Now if we look at Meech Lake as a, as a Turnerian social drama, uh, with the liminal phase being the redress of action, the breach, which is a pre-existing kind of uh, fault in the social structure, would be that uh, Canada was colonized by French and by English who didn't like each other, and they fought wars, and this post, uh, this colonial situation got incorporated into a nation which called itself by one name, but r which really did have distinct cultures and distinct histories and distinct colonial pasts. And uh, the uh, Middle East part of Canada, Quebec, was uh, colonized and had the French culture, and rather the, and the maritime provinces and the West had an uh, English colonial culture. We'll leave out the native cultures, which I think have a very great claim in this, but they're the pre-existing cultures, and the French and English agreed that they should be uh, exterminated or at least uh, uh, shoved aside, so that at that level, uh, both the French and English agreed against the Native Americans with a great claim. So we believe that aside for the moment. So the breach is this inherent fault in the tectonic sense in Canadian society between the French and the English. The crisis occurs, uh, oh, oh, and let's compare it to Romeo and Juliet, which is going on now in a uh, French and English production, because this is an aesthetic structure. The breach in Romeo and Juliet is the animosity between Montagues and Capulets. Uh, that's uh, similar to the French and English. In other words, there's some pre-existing thing, we don't necessarily know what it is in Romeo and Juliet, that puts these two families on edge. Now the crisis in Meech Lake comes when the Quebec people say, we want out. Uh, okay, we want our own country. In other words, they, 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 they no longer agree to the post-colonial settlement that there'll be one country, and they want their own country. Then the redress of action is how you accommodate this desire, uh, either by stamping it out, by trying to sign Meech Lake, which is saying that there's going to be one country but two distinct cultures and so on. Uh, uh, but it's very difficult because redress of actions lead to their own consequences and crises. The, the crisis, in other words, the crisis is what puts the fat in the fire. The crisis in Romeo and Juliet is when Romeo and Juliet see each other and they fall in love then the redress of action is how are they going to get their love together and, and, and deal with the animosity of their families. So the nurse has one plan, Friar, whatever his name, John or Lawrence has another plan, et cetera and so forth, and there are all these different things which become complicated by the uh, murder of Tybalt and, uh, uh, all, uh, and the banishment of uh, Romeo and, and so on, but all of that uh, uh, so the murder of Tybalt, uh, Tybalt and, the, and the, 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 the double murders and the banishment of Romeo are part of the Montague Capulet thing. That's expected, but it's in dialectical tension to the love between the two young people who must heal the very breach and overcome the very crises that, uh, that their families want them to act out. So you have two kinds of redress of action. Similarly, in the Meech Lake business, you have the dramas and the sub-dramas where the pr premieres of... Uh, uh, I guess it's New Brunswick or whatever, uh, Wells, what is, what is he premier of? Which? Newfoundland. Newfoundland uh, agrees but disagrees. And the, uh, the Native American in Manitoba doesn't agree. So all of a sudden, the agreement which you watch the drama in the newspapers was all settled bec uh, is thrown up an edge and you have a deadline which is so dramatic. You know, it's like it then becomes uh, like a, a baseball game. You have nine or a, a boxing match it's, uh, or a basketball game. It's regulated by time. June 23rd is the end of the game. You can't have a draw. A draw is a loss. So you have all these dramas going on which are very much I influenced by sporting events and, uh, uh, and our, 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 the cultural way of waging these dramas and also the, the battle of the individualist 
and the person who can say different things in his home turf than he can in, in Ottawa, which is regarded as a kind of, he was brought there in a liminal space and worked over. But then when he's liberated, he disagrees. He, he's no longer brainwashed, et cetera, and so forth. You see all these dramatic elements. In Romeo and Juliet, it ends tragically. And there were, in other words, through almost a farce, you know, she is uh, in a false death, which he, with his adolescent impo impetuosity, thinks is a real death. He's in a real death. She joins him. In the Shakespeare, the two families are reunited by this tragedy. In the production that Lepage and his English-speaking colleague did down here at the Harborfront Festival, that line, those lines are cut. They just said it's, this is tragic, so that they're very aware of the French and English schism, and they don't resolve it in their production. In Meech Lake, we'll see what happens. Uh, so uh, this notion uh, of uh, this four-part uh, drama, it was uh, Turner's notion, which I helped uh, elaborate, which he elaborated, we worked on, worked on together. And that is, it comes out that the redressive action phase is the liminal phase, in other words, the phase where whatever changes are going to be made are worked out. And then the re-aggregation, if Meech Lake is signed, that's one resolution. If it isn't, it's a schism. That's another resolution. But one moves on. The crisis will be dealt with one way or the other. Although if a, if, a, if a schism is threatened very often, says Turner, and I agree, it's thrown back into the redress of action. So I don't think Canada is going to come apart on June 24th if Meech Lake isn't signed. But it'll go back into how do you do crisis management, which is redress of action. So this is the way you can use performance theory to understand social process, social process to understand aesthetic drama, et cetera.